Hi guys, it's Tana Mojo. Uh, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I have a crazy fucking stalker and there's lots of other videos leading up to this point. This is definitely an update, so um, I guess I'll link those below. But uh, yeah, if you're not new, I have a stalker. I, it's a thing, so hi. <laughs> um, lately, my stalker has definitely topped new heights. Um, I didn't want to talk about any of this until I added on to the police file of everything that he's done. So I just went and filed that police report yesterday and now I guess it's like safer to talk about it. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, this is gonna sound really like drastic, but like if he wants to kill me, he can, he will. If he wants to do anything, he can, he will. I, the police are effective, but I only to a point in my opinion, I'm really freaked out talking about this right now, but um, it's just one of those things where I think that he's a really smart person and he could do it and like get away with it if he really wanted to. I don't know. So lately two things really have happened that have really stood out. A couple other things, but there's a difference between weird things happening because weird things happen to me all the time. I'm just a magnet for weird bad shit. A few things have stood out where I just sat back from the moment and I was like, that's my stalker. I know that's my stalker. It's no one else because he has a very distinct way of doing things. He doesn't do things like dumbly. He never leaves a trace of himself. They're always just very scary. He does things where it's like, it's so without a trace that it makes me feel dumb reporting it to the police like I always feel like whenever I go talk to the police the things I'm saying that they're just looking at me like this girl's crazy this girl's dumb because my stalker is so smart you know what I mean like I don't know so I guess I'm gonna start with the first one and I'm gonna talk about this and I feel like people are gonna be like you're really downplaying that but like I don't know I I'm afraid of my stalker to a point no matter what he's gonna like do whatever he wants. I know that that sounds very like defeated and in a way I am, but it's kind of like if he wanted to literally come in my house tomorrow and kill me, I feel like he could do it without a trace. So I'm done like fighting it. I just kind of am like, damn, that's terrifying. I spent a few hours, you know, like crying terrified. And then I reported to the police and they're like, well, we'll do our best. And then like nothing happens. And it's nothing against the police. There's really nothing they can do, you know, like, it's like invisible, like he's like invisible. That's like such a good way to explain it. Um, I went to Playlist Live DC and I got home from Playlist Live DC. I don't know how many days I was home, maybe like one, two, something like that. And I am notorious, notorious for getting home with a suitcase full of clothes from an event and just leaving it packed for like days or like hours or like something like, like I don't get home and like unpack and do laundry right away like adults do. I just like, I don't, you know? And I took my Polaroid camera to DC and I'm very, very sure of that because I took Polaroids with like all my friends and stuff like that. And it was in my suitcase packed and I I always just leave my suitcase downstairs. My room is upstairs. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but like honestly, like the only person who's gonna hurt me already knows where my fucking room is. So, and so I think I got home and went to bed for like one day, and then I woke up the next day, like did stuff all day, and then like the next night I went to bed and my stuff was still downstairs, zip packed, whatever. And so I woke up the next morning, so like two days later, whatever. I woke up. I don't know. Like lately, I've just I've been feeling like weird in my own house. Like just like I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll be like, hmm, like I don't know. Like I just like feel weird. Just like someone's like like there that but I mean like someone's been in my house or something I don't know but there's never like signs of like forced entry it's almost like someone has a key if that makes sense I, I have I'm literally so scared right now I don't know why I'm sorry I need to chill so I sit up and I look beside my bed and my Polaroid camera is beside my bed and I'm like that's so weird you know like I didn't put it there like Bella didn't put it there Bella was like asleep in her room and so I go downstairs to my suitcase and I open up my suitcase where the Polaroid camera was and the Polaroid camera case was there and all of the film was there but the film was like scattered everywhere like there was just all throughout my suitcase the film had like spilled and so I start going through all of the cameras and I find these two pictures in them and they're like obviously taken of me the first one is just like I don't know what it is but it looks like a zipper of like a jacket is the best way to explain it or like someone's like shirt like as you can see up close it looks like a zipper of a jacket but it's nothing i own it's not my clothes and then it kind of looks like there's like a little hand right there or like something like an arm i don't even know all like or it might be like a chain i don't know what it is but it's that and then a picture of me sleeping <laughs> casually i feel like these stories sound so like there's a picture of me sleeping haha <laughs> like believe it or don't like i i feel like i sound like a liar and that's what that's what i hate about my stalker is everything i say i feel like i sound crazy because he's just like that smart but the weird thing about this is i don't think that this is my bed like at all and i normally don't sleep in makeup i feel like this was taken in dc or in a hotel or something but it it kind of looks like my bed like i have white comforters and white pillows so there's no way of really telling if it's like my bed or not, but I'm sleeping in makeup and this is like me asleep, like as fuck. Like I look asleep, I make this face when I'm asleep where I'm like, and it's like, I'm making that, I don't know. So I don't know when this was taken or, <laughs> I feel like I seem so calm. I'm just very used to this. I don't want you to think that I'm just like, well, picture me sleeping, bye. But I mean like, what the fuck are you gonna do? You know, like I've already cried a million times. There's no point in crying on camera. I'm not that kind of YouTuber, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a picture of me sleeping somewhere, either my room or a hotel. I can't really figure it out. And then this picture. 
and I definitely feel like the police will investigate because this is a really like this is a lot more scary than anything else to normally my stalker doesn't really leave any evidence of anything so for like there to be evidence of like a picture of you sleeping is definitely different of him but at the same time they check them for fingerprints and there weren't any so like I don't so there's that there's no conclusive to this I went on a Twitter rant about it when it happened like my stalker's fucking crazy I don't know what to do so after this happened I was on the phone to someone and I guess I should um, start explaining this I think that my phone is tapped and I've always thought it was like from day one like even when I made that last stalker story that he was like doubling my phone and like they are like in the original the first update I ever did so not my stalker story not that he broke into my house but the update I talked about how he was like on my phone and knew where I was and blah 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 so I'm gonna show you guys why one of the reasons why I think my phone is tapped because this is a sign of your phone being tapped um this is gonna be kind of hard to hear but I'm gonna call someone and I'm gonna play you the sound that plays for my phone so listen really closely every time I make a call as soon as I make a call my phone makes this noise you hear that? I'll do it like a few times for you. Just to like show you, like I'm literally in my call log and I press to call someone and Like, it makes that noise every single time I make a call. The last time I talked about this with the police, the best way they explained it is that when people hack your phone, nowadays, the most common method, the one that my stalker's probably using, it's called doubling your phone. It was originally created for, like, parents to check up on their kids' phones that are young. Basically, someone can go get a phone. It's honestly very easy to do. They just have to know, like, your phone number and, like, your IP address and, like, where you live. A couple other things. And they can put your phone's, like, software, I guess, on, like, their phone. Where, like, let's say if right now I turn on my phone and I slide, their phone would also slide like if I enter my thumb passcode it would also unlock on their phone that's what they're saying my stalker did to my phone was doubled my phone on their phone if that makes sense so everything every phone call I have they can hear it because like they have my phone but it's like on a different phone does that make sense I don't know you can google it I'm not good at explaining things but um anyways I'm very like confident in that uh, just like the fact of my stalker having my phone hacked. another sign of doubling your phone is like let's say I go on my phone and I open like the messaging app I'll open the messaging app and then lock my phone and then let's say like an hour I'll come back on and my phone's just just on like Twitter in my DMs like it's open on a different app that I didn't leave it on and that's a sign of like the stalker like using it I don't even know because like that means he went into my phone and went on Twitter and then it like it left it like that so I was on the phone like a few days after this happened talking about my stalker and I kept calling him sick like over and over again I will always say this about him when I'm talking about him to other people my friends all like know who he is if that makes sense so I'll just like address him by his name but I'll say like he's a really smart person like whoever this is they are incredibly incredibly smart and I can't take that away from them because honestly like every Everything they do to me is so well done and I guess that that's what's like the most scary to me I don't know I, I just feel like at all times they he knows what I'm saying what I'm doing what I'm wearing you know there's no doubt of him like watching me I don't know which is really scary when I say it aloud anyways um I always say he's a really smart person but he is also very sick sick is always like the word that I go for and so the other day on the phone I was really mad and I was just talking about the situation so I was like he's fucking sick this is sick this whole situation is just so sick I don't know why this is my life like since second grade you know like this person Person. When I first told my soccer story video to like the way that I feel now I feel very different about it I used to like laugh at it a lot more and like I didn't feel as defeated I guess um, which sucks to like admit that eventually it just gets really old and as it's gotten worse It went from like, you know The childish shit that he was doing to seeing him like age as a person and become so much smarter and do so much more Fucked up shit to me like fucking take pictures of me when I'm sleeping. I don't know So I kept calling him sick. That's the point of that little tangent I got an email to my business email the other day Jason Voorhees. Do you know what that's from? That's the name of the center. It was like Jason Voorhees with a bunch of numbers at like gmail.com and the profile picture is like a dead clown and it's really scary. I don't want to show the email because I don't want people to like um, go message them. The email is like a, like a fucked up like dismembered clown is like the picture and like just that right away scared me and so the caption of this was a fun scary story for you to enjoy. And at the top, it says sick. I can show you this because it doesn't say it. My focus really sucks, but as you can tell right there, it says sick. And so I'm just going to read it to you. I read it a million times, so if I seem a little bit desensitized from it, it's because I've read this to the police. I read this to my lawyer. I've read this to Belle. I've read this to my parents. I've read this to Summer. I've read it to everyone. She is so beautiful, he thought to himself. He loved her so much, her hot, silky body, the way she tucks her hair behind her ear, her ever so loving voice. But most of all, he adored her sweet, innocent face. He knew all its lines and creases, its many soft curves and sharp angles. Sometimes late at night, he would lie awake for hours, staring at her while she lay peacefully on her pillow. 
gazing lovingly at her features, memorizing its contours with the tips of his fingers. The brow was an impressive brow, high and prominent. He had always thought that a strong brow was the sign of a strong mind. Sometimes he wondered what thoughts went on behind that brow and whether he could ever understand them all. His own brow was not so extravagant and so he guessed neither were his thoughts. But he too had thoughts that were not so easily understood either. He knew he did. He had surprised his lover with them once that was proof enough. Her eyes were so innocent and pure. I think that's referring to like when I was young and like in second grade, fourth grade when he was like stalking me, he'd surprise me with his thoughts then. That was when I actually had like seen him face to face if that makes sense and I was so innocent and pure because I was like young. The sockets deep set but level to give them a penetrating gaze. Behind the shut lids were the brightest blue green eyes he'd ever seen. Baby blue he called them. But there was nothing remarkable about them. The almost imperceptible wrinkles born from the stress of life. Drawn at the corners were a clue to their witness. These were eyes with experience. They had seen quite a lot, not all of it pleasant, which is just less, like so me, I don't know, they'd seen quite a lot, all of, not all of it pleasant. I feel like that's something someone would like say about me, I don't know. Sometimes he thought those eyes could look right into his soul, yet there was still innocence within their look, for he knew they could not see everything. His lover's nose was a man-made marble sculpture, which is like, hey, you got nose surgery, I don't know. A Grecian ideal of beauty, man-made flesh. It helped to accentuate the sharp cheekbones and divided the face with geometric precision and absolutely perfect halves. There are two equal sides to everything, he would say. Just look at my lover's face. The lips were perhaps the most remarkable feature. Thin, but not so thin, they did not feel full and inviting when pressed against his own. More than the brow, more than the eyes, more than the nose. It was the lips that best captured the expressions of his lover. Relaxed, they were a study of contentment. Turned down, they were a roadmap of dissatisfaction. He preferred to think of them turned up in absolute happiness and laughter. It was these lips so sweet and gentle in their line that shaped the words his lover spoke to him. Those words often amazed him. They spoke of important things he sometimes did not understand. They spoke tenderly of him and the affection his lover felt towards him, which I think is him saying like how I always call him smart. And then this is the part where if you were just kind of not listening, I think you should listen. <laughs> he says, once they had spoken harshly, once they had called him sick, but only once, he realized that one cruel insult helped him to remember his lover's kinder words more sweetly. He would spend all night gazing at his lover's face that way and thinking thoughts of true love and devotion until the alarm clock rang, reminding him that he had to go to work. Reluctantly, he would put his lover's head back in the refrigerator where he kept it safe and secure while he was gone. This time, however, he was feeling hungry, wanting a snack. He went to the kitchen silverware drawer, reached inside and pulled out a fork. He then used the fork to impale one of the squirming maggots that had made its home on his lover's dead face. He plucked the maggot into his mouth and gulped it down. Then he placed his lover's severed head back inside the safety of the refrigerator. He walked into his garage where his lover's headless body laid sprawled across the work table. He looked down at it admiringly. He then reached over and grabbed the blood cake bow saw and went to work dismembering her remains one piece at a time. It was an orgy of flying limbs and gore. He remembered to remove her private parts and kept them in the trash can to play with later. After his work was done, he placed the severed body parts in several trash bags and dragged them to his backyard. Outside the moon was full and shining high in the night sky making the stars twinkle. He walked out to the large hole that he had dug a few days earlier and piled the trash bags into the hole. The shoveling of dirt was the only noise heard in the stillness of the night, which I think is him saying like, I wouldn't get caught. I don't know how to explain it. When he was done, he cleaned his tools and put them away. He went back inside his house to take a hot, relaxing shower. The rest of his day would be an empty and unfulfilling one. I think that means because he would no longer be able to like stalk me. I don't know. Until the evening when he could return home to his beloved to embrace his lover to make love to her and to have sex with her rotting severed head once again. Just the thought of performing this act made him hard. Then he would lay her on the pillow beside him so he could contemplate his lover's face again. And then it just says sick. After I got this, I was on the plane home from Chicago and I spent the entire like four hour plane ride searching every plagiarism website, hoping and praying that this story was like plagiarized from somewhere. Someone saw it, like thought that it would freak me out and send it to me. And I spent like a hundred dollars signing up for all these memberships, like $4.99, like $5.99, like all these websites. Cause they, they make you pay for the membership before they can really like check to see if it's plagiarized. And literally like, like 50 plus websites were like no traces of plagiarism. It's rich by the writer and I think that that freaked me out more than anything that's when I really was like fuck like I'm terrified because like like he wrote that like like no one no one else wrote that like that was written about me and like the man-made like nose and like the the blue green eyes and like I don't even know that's the Polaroids should freak me out more but like I don't know like that freaks me out so much more like the th like the thought of like my dead body like my head like I don't
I want to cry, but I don't want to show that kind of defeat on the internet, to be so honest with you. If you're watching this, I mean, you, you're listening to it right now, like, hi, as it's being filmed. But one thing I, I don't ever want to let anyone take away from me is my happiness. And I don't want to live my life in fear. And that's what everyone keeps asking me. My mom was asking me this for hours today, like, aren't you afraid? I am. I don't want to die. You know, I, I feel like it's a very, like, morbid video. But um, I'm not going to live my life afraid. If he's going to kill me tomorrow, I'm going to go out today having a great fucking day. And I, I know that that is sucky. But I, I like, what are you going to fucking do? You know, like, what the fuck am I gonna do at this point? I, I really feel quite defeated. <laughs> There's no point in saying like, please stop. Like this is a video to beg you to stop. It's, this is gonna go on for the rest of my life. You know, like one of us is gonna die first. <laughs> so I guess that's my stalker update. I'll probably make another update after the police. They're tracing the IP address of this email like as we speak, which is really nice. But I mean, I honestly don't see that going anywhere. The Polaroids were like, they checked for fingerprints. They're, the only fingerprints on them were mine. So that's the only reason why they let me keep them. They scanned them so that they could like look into the photo more but what the fuck is that gonna do? Like, oh, there's a shadow. Now we know who it is. Just because he did this to me before, all of these things, like they didn't find his fingerprints on those pictures. If they don't trace this IP address back to like his house, they can't just like put the blame on him and like immediately be like, oh, it's him. Like, here you go. Like you did it because like they can't trace it back to him. That's what sucks so bad. And it's not like I'm gonna like show up at his house and be like, can you stop? Like I'm fucking cool off that. Like I'm really good off doing that. I don't know if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna be answering a lot of questions in this video. I feel like I always get questions about my stock and I don't really know what to say, but yesterday I, I I learned a lot more about the case and like I learned a lot more about stalking and how it works and how people actually get in trouble and for everybody asking do I have a restraining order in order to get a restraining order you have to prove if someone poses physical harm to you I don't have any proof of that that email is proof if they can trace it back to him if that makes sense so all right guys um, I'm gonna end this video because I'm about to hop on a flight to BeautyCon New York and I'm excited to see you guys um, I'm interested to hear your feedback on this because I feel like a lot of the people who've been here since my stalker story know it really well I mean, I've told you everything, you know, and you guys are my family and I appreciate your feedback and your help. So if anybody has any advice for me or anything like that, it's not one of those things where I just want more comments or something on my video. I actually will be reading them because I care about what you have to say. So yeah, subscribe if you already haven't. That would be dope. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.